Alrighty, today is Sunday. Had some time off. It was awesome. Um, we're going to look at the fires in LA. We're going to look at uh, snow in the mountains. We're going to look at what a beautiful day it is. And where is the rain? Bay Area, over 100% of rainfall average in many places. Some areas just a little bit under, like San Jose. But still doing fine for rainfall. Uh, hence, not a lot of fire starts, right? Knock on wood. But because of those higher fuel moistures, we've been dodging the bullet, if you will. Southern California, our percent of average, let's say we're about 100% right now of rainfall average. We've come way down because it's been dry. You go to LAX, they're 1% of their rainfall average. They are record dry, as dry as they've seen in Los Angeles County in recorded history, from what I can see. And of course, they're in the wind zone. So they haven't had rain. They've got windy conditions up there that will continue again for the next 24 hours or so. So, or the next Jeez, 48 hours, right through Wednesday. So I was looking at these uh, images. It's just interesting. This is from an Australian outlet. These are the fires. This is the northern fire would be your Palisades fire. The eastern, the southern, the fire a little further down, that's um, Pasadena. And then you see a few fire starts kind of pop up in the Malibu Hills and the smoke plume coming offshore. Um, not much to say except when you look at topography, remember Coffee Park? Remember Paradise? Remember Oakland Hills fire? Well, this topography is not much different in terms of mountains, basin, and then floodplain, or and a funnel, if you will. So those winds coming off the, the, the Pasadena, the hills, the San Bernardino Mountains, funneling through down Sunset Boulevard, right? And when you see wind gusts, uh, you know, I have saw certain numbers down there, 100 miles an hour. It's not really the true wind. You're getting a, an accelerated wind. You're getting something called Venturi effect, which is when the winds um, get funneled and speed up, which you've probably experienced that. It's kind of like putting water through a squirt gun, right? And the water sits in the tank of the squirt gun, and then you pump the squirt gun, and it pushes it through a narrow pipe, right? And it accelerates it much more. So not a great analogy, but a, that's that basic idea. So I'm going to a live uh, picture. Actually, this would be live at 10.17 this morning. And you're not seeing those smoke plumes. So that's really a good sign for Southern California. But now you've got a situation where you've got um, burn area, right? A lot of burn area. And it's, to extinguish those completely is, it takes months. And actually, really, in my mind, takes a good rain event, um, which isn't coming. Not coming. We're going to be dry for at least through the 21st. In Southern California, it looks like longer. So get used to the dry conditions down there. And as long as we're in these dry conditions, we continue to have these um, offshore winds, Diablo winds, Santa Ana winds, offshore winds, all the same thing. Santa Ana winds, Diablo winds, that's just regional stuff. So the, the, the dry conditions, and we'll continue to have breezy conditions as well. And our fuel moistures are going to start to trend down as well as we go into the next week or two without rain. So we're kind of getting in a weird little spot too. But Southern California under the gun, they got wind, they got uh, the red flag warnings and issues pretty much through Wednesday. A lot of it is nothing, it's not on the same scale as where we were a week ago in terms of, you know, the pressure gradient, record wind speeds, at least that does not appear to be the case, but we're still going to see winds. And again, if you look here in the Los Angeles basin, you can kind of see that funneling effect you would have coming down, kind of just sloping down and up against the hills here. <coughs> Pardon me sloping down to Santa Monica. And so it's a lot of, a lot of fire is um, the really dangerous spots, the firestorm spots, places like the Palisades. It's, it's topo topographically driven. And it, you, people can make the argument, you know, that you, if you were to, I'm not busting on where we all build our homes because I want to live on a ridge line too, or I want to live at, by the ocean. But I've said this a million times. These are the live conditions down there, by the way. And I wanted to point out that the winds at Van Nuys Airport right now, you just hover over, this is Meso West. It's, I, I gotta put it on my links, I don't think it's there. Meso West, you could Google it. Comes up with, it gives you temperatures, gives you all rainfall, a bunch of stuff. But this is, you hover over these sites, like here's some wind, this is Ontario. This is northeast of 22, gusting to 31. So they're a little bit up up in the hill. They're a little bit getting some strong winds, 63 degrees. So um, the winds are there, but not as gusty, not as robust. So what I was going to say is, as you look at Ocean Beach, uh, essentially live, that when you look at where to build, you go look at the, where the Native Americans built or where the or with Spanish missions were. They figured it out real quick. Like the Spanish mission in Santa Barbara is up on a hill for a reason because the 
but the tsunami threat. They've had big tsunamis in Santa Barbara before our time, certainly. But they build the villages because over hundreds of years of existence, you realize, oh, fire. Oh, uh, now fire is way worse than it was back then. But it's um, it's still a good clue. And that, but it's just the way it is. It's just people. We're you know, of course, I want to live here and look at the ocean as well and not worry about tsunamis. And then when I get taken out by a tsunami, I gotta go. I live by the ocean, right? I know. I know. It's it's a conundrum for sure. Uh, let's see. Okay, so Ocean Beach swells are dropping down a little bit they're kind of hovering seven to eight foot tides are high in the morning that's where we're getting that um there's a kind of a, a, a flood coastal flood advisory that green area kind of around lucky drive you know the usual suspects when the tide's high in the morning it's going out now but it's you know the tide's up around six and a half seven feet and it's dropping to a minus one so this is high tide at, at steamer lane this morning and i mentioned i did go to santa barbara and i was down there kind of in that fire zone we were surfing i told you that my move is when it gets really big up here is to just evacuate and go down to santa barbara because that whole coastline just lights up you guys know that i mean it does it's not always there because of the um, islands the swell gets blocked by the channel islands but when the swell sneaks through, it's awesome. So I've got a couple of really awesome secret spots down there. Not, yeah, kind of secret. I'm not going to say where they were. And then uh, I served Rincon a couple of times with my son, and that was super awesome. Because Rincon's just Rincon. It's like probably the best. I think it's considered one of the best point waves in the world. And, and for my money, it is. Okay, in Santa Cruz, this is a point wave as well. Point being the, the wave breaks against the shallower marine terrace of the point and then peels out into deeper water. Okay, and point waves tend to be the best. This is, this morning, I have not skied this year. I wonder if you have. This is the uh, um, Palisades. That I believe that's KT going up the hill. Uh, it, it, it's essentially live uh, at this time again, which is about 1022. What strikes me about this shot, you pick up a skier now and then. You can see the chairlift moving. But where is everybody? I know. People aren't skiing. It's a bluebird day. I would expect people to be skiing. So this is Palisades style. This, I believe, is, um, oh, God, east, uh, some far east. I think it's the far east uh, camera. And you can see the chairlifts moving. And again, we're, these groomers, there's groomers and nobody's out. What you do notice of past the um, beauty of, of Lake Tahoe and the mountains, that's the tram up here, if you can see it. But you're looking, you're starting to see rocks, right? And they had a pretty big winter thus far. And they're doing okay for snowfall. Not bad. Further north, they're doing better. But still... Not bad, but you are seeing a lot of rock up there. And this, of course, is our bank account or our savings account for the summer and the spring. We need snow in the mountains. And we'll go looking for it right now. GFS, 500 millibars. So I told you we're at 500 millibars halfway up through the atmosphere. Essentially, sea level, just broad brush, it is about 1,000 millibars. So as you go up, there's less pressure. Millibar is a measurement of pressure. And it's incremental. So it's a, you know you, people measure pressure in inches. Most of us, most meteorologists measure, measure pressure in millibars because it's more, it's a little more analog. You can get more, it's more granular, small, bigger numbers move around more. So um, in this case, let's say a thousand millibars is where you live, halfway up to the top of the atmosphere, less pressure, so 500 millibars. You go up the next level, you go up to 250 millibars. And then you go, so you keep going, it's less and less pressure until there's zero, almost zero pressure, and we're out of the atmosphere because you're into space. So this is 500 millibar, halfway up through the atmosphere, and this is vorticity, which we just understand it as, just, you could just take it as instability, meaning if there's clouds around, it's gonna rain. This is, doesn't show clouds. This shows where the areas of lift and dynamic activity are. So we push through, got a circle around us, kind of a little inside, outside slider. That's all that is. Inside slider just means, see that thing coming down the coast? That is, it's not quite an inside slider, but essentially is. I don't know how I would define, I think I define that as an inside slider. In other words, it's coming from the north, it's cold, it's dry, and it could bring some instability. And Lake Tahoe will probably get something out of that. But in terms of LA getting some out of it, I don't think so. And here we go now, we're pushing through time. We're going through this week, right? That looks pretty dry. That little cutoff low kicks underneath. Looks like rain, but I'm not seeing it for LA, and you'll see what I mean coming up. So we keep going, we're looking at the 500 millibar vorticity map, and then here around the 21st, that 21st of January, 21st, 22nd. And the models, if you notice, if you were with us yesterday, the models are pretty much 
consistent with this idea. So it's going to be somewhere around there. There'll be some iteration of this, which means we're going to go a while without rain. And then we'll get rain, and then LA doesn't get rain. And then we get a couple of systems that pass through. This one looks good, and that does look like an LA potential. That does look good for LA. But again, you're down. Oh, let's just peek at it. You're down the 26th, 26th of January. So now let's push in a little deeper, a little more granular, and we'll go um, look at the model. This is accumulated precip. So how this is, okay, we're not getting any rain day after day. We're out 80 hours, out 90 hours, starting to show something. Here comes the 21st right there. Okay, and now 22nd, 23rd, right? And that's it. That's all the way through, where's that through? That's through the 28th. So that, that so it's just showing two tenths of an inch along the coast. Really slightly depressing. Does that mean that will happen? No. It, it doesn't it mean it's a pretty good guess? Eh, eh, probably a pretty good guess. Uh, when you get out, when you get out past five days, right, seven days. Okay, here's Golden Gate Bridge. There's the beautiful bay, prettiest place in the world. Enjoy the weather while it lasts. I will get rain in here, but it's going to take a little while. And just because I showed you that um, that long range and it shows not a lot going on, it, things will happen. Things will get better. Uh, it, that that model it doesn't take much to tweak it around, especially when you're out past five, six, seven days. Now Shasta's got snow. They're doing really well for water up north. And again, that's Lake Shasta largest surface reservoir in the state lake orville second largest surface reservoir in the state so they're full or they're doing well for rainfall and shafts is doing well for snowfall so that about covers it um back at work tonight and the rest of this week awesome um weather pattern if you like getting outside and showing the, your friends around and hiking and such not awesome if you're looking forward to some rain which i at this point am and i know the mountains are as well so thanks for going on that little journey with me I will see you back here. So much to talk about. I will, I will see you back here tomorrow morning.